Justin, how you doing, brother? Good. Very good. You're not in the garage? Nope. I got the house to myself tonight, just me and the dog. So you I'm in the dining room. up your, your situation? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The garage seemed like your deal. It was. I need to get, I'm in a new garage now. I need to get this one in shape for it. Okay. Uh, it's not, it's kind of a mess right now, the garage. No Everything else is in order. Okay, I'm fixing to mute everybody for the intro. Sorry about that. We're a minute 30. Hey, I can't see you. Uh, you, you soon, uh, we're in the, uh, that's going to clear up once the show yeah, starts. Two minutes. L yeah, a minute 20 to the intro. You'll see JV when the show starts. We won't okay. see Mark though. Okay, so I'm going off and I'm muting everybody. What's up, people? Harris County Criminal Lawyers Association presents Reasonable Doubt here with the very, very, very special guest, ex Harris County Criminal Lawyers Association president, uh, all world show, longest running host of all time, the one, the only, the incomparable, Mr. Thomas B. DuPont. How are you doing, sir? Hey, brother. Fellow host and friend and amazing attorney, Justin Harris, where are you at? Hey, man, I'm here. I thought you were going to say Todd had the longest hair. Uh, yeah, longest uh, host as well. He does, he does. He, he's, he has been recently been confused of, with Benjamin Franklin and causing all kinds of mess on time travel, if it's true, if it's not, all over the Internet and social media. We also have a few people joining us already on the interweb. Kate Farrell, give us a shout on the web. How you doing, Kate? That's it. She, it? Says, she says, what's up? We had to wait for that. <laughs> How does she join us on air? Yeah, well, I mean, she can click the link, click the link. You know, I'm looking at this. Oh, Judge Morton's on the show. Judge Morton, what's up? He's uh, Judge says last week's show was so much better, but Judge Morton, I'm going to say with you on the show, now it's so much better. We should send him the link. Judge Morton's on the show. How are you doing, Judge? He says, uh, cool. So uh, Good. Uh, we're here live on the, in the studio. We have uh, Todd in, in his studio and Justin on his, in his studio and Judge Morton and Kate hanging around. Where should we start, man? It seems to me that the easiest 
point in terms of for Harris County, or the ideas of should trials be continued at NRG, it, as, as we understand, uh, the contract has been extended through the end of the year. So yes, there will be jury trials kept at NRG Stadium. So I mean, I would think we would start there. One of the things, so, so for those that are watching and those that don't know, um, jury trials have been extended at NRG Arena at least through the end of the year. Now, there's a couple new developments that we know about in the NRG. The first one being, in no particular order, the first one being is that they have, uh, so typically they have extended the amount of uh, veneer panels that are available. So for example, uh, before um, a couple weeks ago, there was, uh, there was four. So you'd have veneer, uh, you'd have jury pin one, jury pin two, jury pin three, and then you would have the stadium uh, seating. Now, from what I understand, they have the second floor, so that will allow at least eight. So they have one, two, three, I think there's four, and then five, six, seven, eight. I have not been on the second floor. I don't know how it is, uh, but apparently, uh, there there are eight juror uh, selection um, seating that, that are available. That's available for civil courts, criminal courts, family courts. So right, and so right, and it's my understanding I, that I don't know if anybody's sat any anyone on the upper levels and. Uh, so, for example, uh, I've sat nine juries at, at NRG, and I've only been in one, two, or three. I've never, been ha I've never had the luxury of seating in the stadium seating, um, but from what I understand, there are uh, restraints for individuals in custody that certain seating areas. And so I wonder if there are any prohibitions for inmates going to the second floor. And maybe if that's the case, then the second floor is reserved for people who are on bond or well, the reality is JB, cases. they, well, you and I, and many of our friends are pretty in tune. This is not a shot to the judiciary. I'm saying we hear things probably almost immediately when they hear things, but we didn't know they were adding the second floor. They actually doubled down on um, having jury trials. Right. And clearly we're now learning that the contract has been extended through the end of the year. So uh, at NRG. I have a question on that, JV. How did you find out that about inmates only being allowed into certain than our rooms or well, my my ego was hurt stalls. my ego was hurt and i went and i said why are other people getting the stadium seating and i'm stuck in these veneer rooms where the audio is messing up and doesn't work and it's not conducive to a, a good presentation and they told me well because you seat the were the people in custody you see the worst of the worst you see the people who aren't wait custody. what so they can't seat the they can't seat the inmates in the stadium seating uh uh because of security issues it sounds like there are certain rooms for jury selection that they reserve for inmates versus bonded defendants yes that's correct so that that question that that raises for me is if that becomes public knowledge and a juror finds himself in one of those rooms, are they going to presume that the, the defendant is in custody, which is the whole reason why defendants are not allowed to be shackled in front of a jury or in a jumpsuit in front of a jury. They're not supposed to know that. So even if they have someone who's on bond, the juror's mind is going to be that, well, now if they see your face in their JV, they're going to know you're representing the worst of the worst because you just outed yourself. But um, are they going to know that or presume that 
if they are in that room that ABC 13 reports is only used for people who are in custody. And this whole thing, the more we find out about this, the more this whole thing seems like a bad idea. The, Typically, uh, the answer is the court would um, likely inquire, but probably not off the bat, Justin. But one of the things that I uh, that I the other um, thing that I I don't like, and that if anybody sitting juries out at the NRG Arena is much like when you're going into the courthouse, and it's just different. But when you go into NRG Arena. I typically have to get there and want to get there extra early so that nobody sees me walking into the building with shoes and a coat and the dress, the dress down. Uh, and it, because it's a, it's a big deal when I don't want jurors to, to know that I'm coming in dressing my, somebody I'm representing. Oh, you're talking about the suit, not the suit that you're going to wear, but carrying another suit tie and shirt on a coat hanger Shoe, that you're yeah. going to give to your client all the way to shoes and then they see yeah. that yeah and they see those clothes on your client and they know yeah i've wondered how they handle that but, yeah you have to sneak um, it in otherwise you're gonna you're literally walking in with them and they are and everybody's like watching you because you're the only person in a suit and you're very obviously carrying in things um it's kind of the same way that you do at the cjc but it's it it, it it's sucks. JV, it's it, it's not the same way. It's not. Yeah, no, it's very different. Um, the clothing would be not. They would never see clothing. We you carrying clothing. The, right. That's the truth. I also heard that they're going to change the name from NRG Arena to the J Julio Vela Jury Selection Plaza. Yeah, right. Y'all say he's all nine. He's done nine jury trials. I've there, said there's I, been there's only been like a hundred. So you've done like almost one in ten jury trial has been yours. Uh, 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 about ten percent. Uh, I will say uh, that's ridiculous, and I'm not cool with that. Um, hey, uh, uh, Jeff Ross posts it as on the COVID, it's something around a hundred, uh, that have been, that have been sat. And it looks like we got a couple of the D, uh, so Troy Locklear got a big, uh, dismissal after suppression hearing, uh, uh yesterday or day before. Yesterday and, and the jury was sworn. And apparently it had Good. to deal with maybe some testimony from the officer that wasn't truthful and uh, and something regarding uh, body cameras that, you know what, body cameras were in play and it turned out that, you know, what the officers were saying weren't exactly true. Good. Good job, Troy. And y'all know uh, Laura Autry? Laura Autry just got a not guilty on a sexual assault. I think it was yesterday or today. A lot of out are you on, are you on Autry. show me the justice.com I am because I was looking at the jury trial stuff Laura Altry, Laura a uh, lot of Autry's just kicking butt so on the scoreboard it's the state 77 the defense 47 um, so the states the state's kicking some butt so it's been over a hundred jury trials some of the uh, there's two there's two questions on the live wire that are already popping off one of them by uh, Jennifer Grant saying, um, how many cases have been appealed, right? So, so far the state has won 77 jury trials in COVID times. And, uh, you know, we've all, a lot of us have lodged appeals or at least preserved errors for appeals. And I guess the big question is, uh, is whether these COVID objections are going to hold water and it's a be big question, sustained bro. or or not? I mean, what do y'all? What says y'all? Yes, to me, yes is the answer. And uh, well, I say yes. It's a viable uh, appellate issue. Sadly, I don't believe that the current state of the appellate courts and the Court of Criminal Appeals will find this harmless. You don't think that they will find it harmless, or you think they Correct. will? That's my opinion. I do not well, believe they'll find this harmless. You think it'll find I, it harmful? You think they're, they're going to come back on it? I think they'll some, 
These are the same people that created a rule called harmless error, man. Yeah. Well, what do you so what do you point to on the appeal? Like what's the issue? We argue that it's unfair. Uh, because of all COVID issues. While JV filed or tried the first case down there, I filed the first motion down there, which I, was denied. Yeah. But the issues are raised. Uh, and quite frankly, I don't believe it's the, the judges that are down there. I, their notion is that they want to make sure humans have their day in trial at the end of the day. The question really is, and always has been since COVID, is can these humans have a fair trial with what's going on down here? Uh, typically, our answer is no like across the board. I agree with that. I don't, I don't, I don't think, I, I don't think any, I don't know. I, I think all of our objections that have been overruled will be sustained on appeal, man. I don't know. Well, here's the thing. It honestly is going to depend upon nine humans that work in Austin. Because you're right. This That's why I don't be have a taken lot up. Convictions will be taken up. And let's just call it like 10 years from now. If people look back 10 years from now, maybe five years from now, and say, you know what? Was that fundamentally fair? If the answer to that is yes, well, then those convictions stand. If it's fundamentally no, we're going to do all of this over do you That's think real talk? Well, the, then the question is, is, do you think that, you know, uh, they've had 70 plus 41. So it's really like, OK, so 80 plus 40 is 120 trials in the last year and a half. Um, was it worth it? Was it worth it? And, you know, maybe they'll have another 50 by the end of the year. That's optimistic. I know a lot of well, a I lot of judges are canceling panels. Uh, the two, Judge Amy Martin, nobody's having a jury trial for the next couple months in there, for example. Well, I think uh, that, personally, I don't think that it's, that it's fair, that you're going to get a fair trial in there uh, under these conditions at NRG. I don't know how likely I think it's going to be that these things are going to get turned around on appeal, because we've just seen the courts of appeals look for every reason to find harmless there, find that error was harmless. Uh, and I don't even know if they're going to kind of call that this was air. They're going to say that there was a process that was followed. And I think that the issue with direct appeal is that you have 77 convictions. Those are the only ones that can be appealed. So you can't have these 124 cases be appealed. Um, so you can only have 77 of those. Those, the direct appeal deadline is 30 days. Um, so you're going to have to turn around after five years or 10 years and look back and say that wasn't fair. And you have to look at an IAC claim, I would think. I'm not a post-conviction attorney, but I think you have to look at ineffective assistance of counsel. And if the attorneys are filing and making their proper objections prior to trial, I think the Court of Appeals is not going to give the defendant any relief and say, no, no, no. They, their, their window for direct appeal to say that that process was unfair closed. And then their, but their counsel was affected by making the, the proper objections. Again, I'm not an appellate attorney. I don't know if on a writ they can get into the underlying. I'm afraid you're right, made. bro. But I'm afraid all the district court judges are right, and but that's not a well. It is a bad thing, but the problem. It's is, a very bad thing. It's a bad thing for the people who go off and who don't get a fair trial. Nothing can be. The system is supposed to have checks and balances on it. It's supposed to work and strive for fairness, not strive for clearing out court's dockets. And that's one thing I'm going to disagree with you on, Todd, is that you said that the judges who are doing this are doing this to give a defendant their day in court. That may be the result that, they're, that, that actually ends up happening is you have a defendant having their day in court. And yes, there are always people who still want to go to trial under these conditions when they've been fully informed of the risks of, of picking a jury under these conditions. But 
we've heard from judges on this show and we've heard from judges off the air that the reason why they're setting cases for jury trial is to make the attorneys do their work and to make mainly what we hear more often is to make prosecutors do their work. Um, and the prosecutors aren't doing anything. They're not moving cases, the backlog, the backlog, the backlog, which is all, by the way, state again, creation by the prosecutor's office of their own doing. That's why it seems like these cases are getting put to trial is because cases are backing up and judges don't have or don't know of other ways to make them clear out other than set them for trial and hold people's feet to the fire. So uh, Corey Roth uh, brings a, a big question on what is the what are the current win loss statistics relative to pre COVID statistics? Currently, yeah, I was going to say Jeff Ross, his website crunches all those numbers. If he's got the post COVID win loss of seventy seven forty seven, he should be able to crunch numbers on the on the. The it, ratio before COVID. It was 77, uh, and he had it broken down differently. It was a st uh, currently it's 7747, and then on the uh, you know pre-COVID, I want to say it used to be on misdemeanors. We uh, defense was winning, and then on um, and then on felonies, we were down. Defense was down probably by like 20 or 30. Um, Angela Williams Cameron says you're correct. Di uh, direct appeal will require the objection. You know, no objection could re will, will result. It. Most uh, lawyers are objecting to it. Um, it's overruled. It's preserved. Well, I'm right. You're gonna have to preserve it. Some of the lawyers that I know, but these issues have been preserved by objection. But they're preserved for thirty days, right? For direct appeal well no but if they get convicted right well, they go right. down for 30 years like on the appeal the court's gonna have i'm saying the court of criminal appeals is gonna have to visit with this uh jennifer yes. grant is watching says is anybody anybody experienced being forced to trial prematurely due to any COVID effect on proper investigation or know of any other lawyers who have um i i think what she's really asking is um, you know, what happens when there used to be the argument that, and it would, it would fly that, Hey, look, uh, COVID's going on and I can't go investigate and I can't go into the streets and talk to the people on the streets, um, because of COVID that used to be something that carried weight. And I'm wondering if that carries weight now. I, I don't think it does. Well, my answer we can call any witness or anybody i mean my investigators track humans down so in terms of investigation no we call everybody and we track everybody now. uh COVID has nothing to do with answering a telephone <laughs> well, i mean that's true um now if they don't that's another issue angela 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 Cam williams cameron says the first three trials in October, which I lost, and uh, in October, the PDO got the appeals on, which were mine, uh, and I filed, the, I filed the continuance. And so the first couple of them, at least the ones that are on appeal, um, I filed is, is actually, is basically uh, a, a tailored Todd's opinion, a Todd's continuance. Todd's continuance had, I mean, I, what was it like a, it was like a 15 page continuance or something. 26, but Tw 26. That's pages. cool. I mean, but look, that was the points. Like, and it wasn't originally my motion that was written by lawyers across Texas, man. You tried the first one. I filed the first motion. Yeah. Um, however, my case worked out. Um, the, I mean, clearly the issue becomes that on conviction, if that, that those issues are raised and argued, which I know that you're right in the front of it, JV, uh, I, I personally believe it's something the Court of Appeals should look at. Am I optimistic they would give relief? I can't say that I am. I agree by the time sure. that they reach that issue, it might be a whole other court of appeals. 
I agree. They should look at it, and I'll be curious to read some of their opinions and the analysis they do from Austin on this or a different because they they a lot of these cases should reach the CCA from different things. We have to remember that every county was required by the Office of Court Administration and the Texas Supreme Court to provide their own plans for conducting safe jury selections during COVID. And so you're going to have 254 different versions, give or take. I guess there's some districts that include more than that county. But, but the, you're going to have hundreds the of different is, versions. If it's subjectively unreasonable, and that's that's not going right. to work. You well, really I, I think it's it, going to have to show harm beyond harmless error. And honestly, in my and I just do trial work, but honestly. That's going to take those justices sitting in Austin to honestly take a hard fucking look at themselves and say, man, did these people get a fair trial? Are they, because are if they, they just fucking push it off, well, then all, everything stands. I, You're right. I, I don't. And it'll just be, and quite frankly, it'll be an unpublished opinion. It's right. Kind of right. Shitty, man. Hey, you know, yeah. there, there's a, there's something brewing. Uh, a couple of our our viewers are asking about it. There's a there's something brewing in Brazoria County, which uh, if any of the viewers or anybody else can uh, uh, articulate. Um, so Tom Selleck, a very well-renowned defense attorney that everybody knows if you're from Brazoria County. Um, not the movie star. Not the movie star, but uh, I, I, I think I have seen him with a mustache as equally as appealing. Uh, states the Brazoria County Criminal District Attorney's Office recently received information indicating irregularities may have occurred in the Brazoria County District Clerk's Office's assembly of jury panel, jury trial panels. Based on the information provided to date, the District Attorney's Office believes jury trials, jury trial panels may have been assembled in a manner inconsistent with applicable statutes and law. As the District Attorney's Office continues to investigate the matter, appropriate further notifications will be made. Um, oh, wow. Uh, Craig Hughes on the live wire just said the Brazoria County district clerk resigned today. Wow. wow. That's a big deal. So I wonder that's how a very, I read that letter a couple times from, from Mr. Selleck's office. That's a very carefully worded letter. If you read it a couple times, they chewed on that for a while before they put that out. And I don't know if that's because they're not, they're really, really not sure if anything happened. Or they're just really trying to be careful to not tip off what happened. But I'm very curious as to what kind of irregularities and inconsistency with statutes they're referring to. Well, uh, I mean, Craig Craig Hughes, board certified attorney in criminal and of criminal appeals, uh, just said that he re that that district clerk resigned, uh, and we're getting a, a a good amount of of banter on the. Live wire here. Um, if somebody could articulate, if anybody has some insight on it, I mean, I won't, I won't, if you want to just message me, I won't read it. If so, so be it. But that's a big deal. I wonder for how long this has been going on, how many cases have been affected. And if the district clerk resigns today, I, I suppose they have some sort of like second. Was it, was it district uh, clerk or county clerk? The Brazoria. Brazoria County District Clerk resigned. That's incredible, actually. That's amazing. That's amazing. She's, she, a district clerk is a, as important as a district attorney. They are. I mean, they're responsible for, you know, not only keeping the records of, like, everything, but in paneling and making sure that jurors come to court the the all the I, I don't i don't know enough about resorius so i'll let the others chime but that's uh incredible yeah the her, true word of it incredible uh craig he's obviously everyone knows a district clerk uh ronda barchak you know and i wonder 
That'd be terrible. I mean, she's uh, the the clerk's obviously in charge of facilitating and making sure everything's okay. But I, 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 I it begs the question: if if that clerk came in and was just doing things as they've always been done, how far back is this issue? I don't know. Just something to think about. Anybody? We're getting a lot of banter. I mean, that came out today. Well. There's anything about what they're saying was done wrong. I'm gonna, I'm gonna really bring it back to anything? Harris County. Um, Judge Fleischer on the show. What's up, Judge? Hey, brother. Uh, the Texas legislature has passed that we're gonna have a new district court judge or court, the 482nd, which is weird. We don't have anything in the 400s. But now we do, starting September 1, uh, the people behind the scenes, I've kind of asked, do we know who's going to sit there? Uh, the answer is no. But since it's a created court by the uh, legislature, um, the governor gets to pick who sits there until the next election. So, dude, what they're saying on the live wire is that this malfunction from the district from the district clerk goes back to 2011. Oh, well, uh, Craig, a lot of cases. Look, that's a statement by Craig Hughes. Craig Hughes, if you can, I'm going to send you the link. Why don't you come on and talk to us about what you think, you know, or what you say, you know, because that is some big deal. 2011 that means every every trial that's been had since send in the link send in the link and see if mark can watch and see if anybody let me see if i can send homeboy the link craig i'm uh, let me see here that's incredible can you imagine since 2011 every that's incredible i wonder what like i mean what was the irregularity you know what i mean well, okay, so here's one thing. 2011 and 2021, one thing that comes out there is census data being released. I wonder if it has something to do, that's what I was initially thinking, is like who they were summoning for jury service in an area like Brazoria County, which is arguably somewhat segregated. Um, Not arguably. It, yeah, I was trying to be nice to the Brazoria County viewers. We have a ton of them. Um, our host is from Brazoria County. But... Um, you know, if 2011, 2021, if it has to do with, you know, racial makeups of jury, jury panels from based on census information, I don't know. I mean, that's that it, the, the, the clerk's job should be so simple with computers these days. And I know Brazoria County's computer system is kind of getting upgraded, but I'd like to know what kind of irregularities are investigated. Speaking of com computer systems, how terrible has the clerk site district clerk site been running in harris county for the last week well yeah it's been a nightmare please go ahead just it's been a nightmare and it's you know it's had a ripple a, a ripple effect because the, the district attorney's portal the da's portal that we can go through requires like authentication through the clerk's website to get over to it and if you can't get to the clerk's website you can't get to the da's portal and see their open file so yeah it's been a big problem not just for us but in the courts themselves judges have been like i, I can't do anything right now it's down the clerks have been like, i can't do anything our system's down my thought about it is clearly you always attribute the you know in terms of what the fuck is going on, seriously, to the highest person, which is Marilyn Burgess. But she sent an email uh, yesterday, I believe. She claims her IT people are on this. But the reality is, I don't believe it's, it falls on her shoulders, but it's her IT people. Hey, this look. week, last week, we can't work without internet in this building especially when they when they say okay we everything goes to internet and the internet shuts down hey i think we got craig hughes on the line craig how are you 
Hey, Mr. Hughes, thanks for coming me? on. Yes, Can sir. you hear me? Okay. Yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of big news in Brazoria County in the last 24 hours. Um, what do you say? What do you know? Yeah, give us a scoop. Well, apparently, what what we've been told, and I, I'm not nearly as informed as a lot of other people, but uh, in putting together the the panels and putting together the lists, uh, there are indications that people in the north part of the county, mainly Pearland. Um, have been disfavored, that the hmm. county, that the jury list have been slanted heavily in favor of the south part of the county. Um, and there hey, may, bro. there may how, be a- How would they do that, bro? Well, the, the, whoever, someone in the district clerk's list and in the district clerk's office, excuse me, um, or people, a group of people, Basically, when this when people would show up and the summons would come in, they were and this is again rumor. I you know none of this has been proven uh, that certain groups of people were just sort of their information was trash was tossed in the trash can and they were excused, told to go home. Though now, they I find were it hard, given a wow. summons to come to court, they're given a summons to show up for jury duty. They go down there and then someone somewhere makes the decision that people from certain parts of the county should be uh, excluded on a routine basis. Uh, wow. And let me this just give you an example. Okay, well, yeah, Dennis, I second chaired a murder trial with Dennis Smith back in May. Uh, I live in, in Pearland. I live in Brazoria County. Um, I would say that my the two zip codes in Pearland probably... 30% of the population of Rosoria County, somewhere in there. And I think out of a panel of a hundred, we had six or seven wow. for my zip code. Wow. So they, they just, they've been heavily skewed, like I said, in favor of the Southern part of the County, like Lake Jackson, Angleton, Clute. So, so that's the story, but the district clerk did resign today. From uh, there's, there's uh, people on the, that are messaging me we now. We have a lawsuit saying, coming. Well, they're saying right now, Sorry, people on the on the uh, are messaging uh, messaging me now, saying that there is actually a grand there potentially may be a grand jury that's investigating what's going on now. I mean, uh, I don't I, I find it hard to believe that um, this story just broke, right? Like you'd like to think that this has been going on, people knew about this, this was a calculated thing, and it just kind of it popped now uh, is what says you Craig? Well, this is all happening in the context of what's going to be a highly contested election for district clerk. Uh, Rhonda Barchak had announced that she was retiring at the end of her term next year. You know, she would be up next year. And so there's kind of a hotly contested Republican primary three candidates so far. Um, a lot of the talk is that someone who did not, um, Someone who doesn't favor her chosen candidate, uh, you know, provided this information to someone in the DA's office. So I, I had heard rumors that this was going to come out about a week ago. Another thing I would say, I heard that several employees of the office today were served with grand jury subpoenas. Wow, wow. that's yeah. incredible. This is literally yeah, I mean, how I, I'm seven seven five eight four. So I live in Pearland. Uh, okay. I, I will say that, uh, and we have people here uh, all, that are messaging me now saying that they have noticed that as well, that the makeups of the veneer panels and the people that are coming in uh, aren't necessarily uh, recently, okay? Uh, because right. we've seen a big change in Pearland, North Pearland, 288, the beltway right. that's coming in, there's a, I mean, not the beltway, the, well, the, well, we have the beltway, but the, the tollway. Brother, JV, what he's talking about is different, bro. It's a systemic, this is actually what mass lawsuits are about against the government. That's right. incredible. Do you think yeah, that. Yeah, JV, you never would have thought that you being from Pearland would have been why you were a disenfranchised person. I thought it was because of the color of my skin, but that's what I'm referring to. <laughs> Not because you're from Pearland. That's anyway, in... go on. Uh, so we have um, 
Well, you know, John Kahn's on the show. John Kahn, how you doing? He says he's only John. been. Yeah, John Kahn's on the show. Uh, Where's he at? He says, what's up? John, how you doing? Uh, Craig, you know John? John Kahn? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, you so. know John. But he says uh, he lives in, in my zip code as well, and he says he's only been called for jury selection once in 20 years, and we're North Pearland. Now, I, right. um, I, would, I will say that we have seen a big change in the demographics of North Pearland, of North Brazoria County in the last 10 years. I mean, that, I mean I've lived down there for 10 years, 13, um, and it right. has changed greatly. Do you yep. think that... Uh, now, everybody knows Tom Selleck down there. Um, everybody's known him for, I don't want to date him, but for, for a minute. Uh, right. Incredible, uh, amazing reputation, amazing defense attorney. Uh, and, and, uh, do you, what is your opinion as to whether is, he, is a lot of this investigation or brunt going to fall on him? And how do you feel like, what's your opinion of him, uh, of, of where this needs to go or how it's going to go? I, I think a lot of it is going to fall on him, and I think he's going to, uh, I think he's going to possibly encourage the filing of a lot of writs. I do. As a defense, well, let's uh -huh. let's back this up a little bit, Craig. Would you mind? I appreciate you coming on. I'm going to put you on the spot, but explain to us, just kind of lay it out, how what the the rumor mill or what the allegations might be of not including as many North Brazoria County residents on jury panels and on actual sworn juries, what that can do for outcomes of cases. Well, what does I, that I mean? Think, what does this mean for us? I think generally speaking, the people who are, uh, you know, in the Southern part of the County, my experience has been that they tend to be a little more pro state, you know, um, People in the northern part of the county, I mean, I, I've, I've tried a lot of cases down there. You you see a lot of Rice professors. You see a lot of U of H professors, uh, a lot of medical center people, of course. Generally speaking. Uh, Craig, real quick, this is in the same county, but just uh, different parts of where they live in the same county? Yes. The southern, the southern in part. In Missouri is, County? Yes. Okay. Now, the southern part is very different. In my opinion, demographically, I uh, you know I I would prefer jurors from this side. That's just the my northern side. Difference. The northern side, right? And, and another weird thing that's going on down there. I mean, Jerry Yenny, you know, resigned last mm -hmm. year. Just announces one day that she's resigning. Sally gets appointed. Um, I think two of the district court judges, or is it three? I think two of the district court judges have retired, uh, two of the county court judges are retiring, I and mean, there's gonna be some massive turnover in that courthouse, you know, in the next in the next election. And I've been hearing ours, rumors that a lot of that is related to this, you know, I, I there's would, nothing- Would they be them. ours though? Would are they, they be ours what? over there? Oh Republicans. yeah. Republicans. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the district clerk, she is a, uh <laughs> extreme r so you know well so that's the thing is when you say that you would prefer to have jurors from the northern part and that the ones from the southern part may be more state oriented that's the whole purpose of having this mixture and this good cross section of people from the from all across the county so that when you get them all in a room you can find out regardless of what part of the county they live in who's a qualified juror who's not a qualified juror and so when you skew it one way or the other, you're skewing that pool of qualified jurors right. and um, for a defendant. But also I've seen case law that actually looks at you're disenfranchising, like under a Batson challenge, you start disenfranchising certain members of a community from being able to participate in the, you know, one of the most American parts of our system, which is jury duty. Right. It, it, and, and anyone who practices down there, I'll tell you, particularly within about the last year, uh, it seems that every defendant um, who's selected jury punishment has been maxed out, every single one. Wow. Um, so, and, and, you know, I've noticed a real trend in that direction in the last year or so. Is it, do do, do y'all, uh, is it, is it, should your foot off if you just 
go to the court? For the most part, I think, yeah. I don't mean to be ugly to the judiciary, but I'm saying yeah. you're you're better to go to the jury, even though the court, you know, might max you out. You know, it's it's a much closer call now than it used to be, particularly oh, within dude. the last year. It yeah. can't get any worse than the max from the jury, so why not go right. to the judge? Right. Exactly. Excuse me, y'all. Is uh is is Tom Selleck if he's going to of a lot of the 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 burden is going to shoulder on him to investigate these things is he committing political suicide in that county? He could be, right? He could be, yeah. But you know, I don't know. Um, I, I think he had only planned to. He's finishing out her unexpired term, and I think he was going to run for one more term. I, I think Tom is sixty five, sixty six somewhere in there i could be but he's a little bit older than i am uh, but i my understanding was he was just going to run for one more term so what would be the remedy to since 2011 since these things have potentially been going on that's incredible ritz for yeah, everybody pretty. yeah and i that you know that's what i'm hearing from people who basically because i my practice is probably about a third brazoria county but the you know the full timers I've been following a lot of discussions today in these group texts, and and there seems to be a group that thinks he's going to really encourage, you know, an investigation to look into this. Oh, uh, how did it yeah. break? How did it break at the courthouse? Well, I did that letter that, that he sent out last night, I think, is when most people got wind of it. Like I said, I heard rumors about a week ago that something big was coming with respect to, to the jury process. Um, but then last night is when it really broke wide open and apparently she went in this morning and resigned. I mean, so just said, I'm out. It said, I'm out. And in fact, yeah, he's already got the letter, like on the very top of his website. Right. Dated yesterday. Yeah. If, in fact, I'm not saying I would, but I don't do this litigation, but a federal judge in Harris County, or I'm saying in Houston district would enjoy this litigation. Right, exactly. That's because it would not go well. It would not go well for the county. Not Who do you them. hold responsible for this? Wow. Like the district the district clerk, the county at large? Like, what's the cause of action? I mean, I think the district clerk it's primarily- It's a violation of due process, for instance. Well, on the individual cases, sure, reversal, new trial. But if there's a big lawsuit, like, what's the cause of action? Who do you go after? Right. You know, another big question mark that's you hanging over this. Yeah. Is, is why, you know, what, why would she do this? Why would people in her office do that? That's been sort of the, you know, the real unanswered question today. What was her motivation? I mean, what was she getting out of this? If, if this was in fact is what was happening. Did, uh, is, um, is the district clerk down there a, a part of the, I mean, I'm there, but my, my, my vast majority of my practice is 98% sure. of my practice, Harris County. Right. Uh, I mean, I'm in Brazoria once a year. Um, right. it, is the district clerk down there part of the daily hustle and bustle of the courthouse or is she like in Harris County, you know, we don't see Marilyn Burgess and we don't see uh snively we don't see them around it, 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 it is is the district clerk down there part of the hustle and bustle and part of the legal community down there yes she's very visible she was a mm -hmm. court reporter before she was elected district clerk and she's been there i think since the late 70s maybe wow, wow. Yeah. yeah that's incredible yeah and so. it had to have it in brazoria county so it's right. like yeah uh, Hey, JB, you and I are going to talk tomorrow. That's incredible. <laughs> no. um, uh, Jennifer Grant on the live wire here asks, um, any complaints on the civil side? Well, I think it, it would be both sides. So it's whether or not, it doesn't matter if it's civil or criminal. I think it would just go to the veneer makeup. Um, right. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah, I mean, I think there's some people that may have gripe on that end as well. Wow. So it's just stay tuned, stay tuned. I think it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be very interesting. Call. What we, yeah, I just shut him down. Um, 
So I think it's going to be very interesting in the next couple of months to see what, you know, what we, what we learn. Have, have, have there been any rumor mills or any ideas as to who's going to replace her or replace the clerk's position? Uh, no, and I'm trying to find that out. I did hear a rumor, though, that they're going to announce it tomorrow. Um, also, I know that they have started canceling. Um, they've started canceling jury trials through the middle of September. Uh, several calls. Yeah. yeah, several calls were made today about that, that you don't need to worry about it. You're going to get reset. So thank God, because I have one next Tuesday. <laughs> one I think my, you're one, safe. Yeah, one of my <laughs> one I have a year and I'm thinking and I was moving for a continuance, but I think I'm fine for that now. You're going to be safe. Don't worry. <laughs> Um, Katie Farrell says uh, the national headlines are going to write themselves. Yep. Small rural county in Texas. You know, Brazoria County is not as small as all these people think it is, though. It's a big county. 400,000. 400,000. 400,000. And, you know, with the influx that's coming in on North Pearland, it's um, – there's a it, it, the, the face of Brazoria County is changing. It really is, in my opinion. Yeah, look at all those neighborhoods coming in, you know, 288 south of Highway 6. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I Iowa Colony is not the same Iowa Colony it was 10 no. years back. Not so, at all. You know, and you would never know it if you showed up for jury duty that there was that many people in North Brazoria County. I was, right. I was wondering why I was the only Mexican when I showed up in jury duty a couple <laughs> years ago. I'm sitting there like, I know there's more, there's more of us somewhere, I swear. Yeah. Uh, Craig, have you tried anything up in Harris County? Uh, yes. Uh, since, uh, since COVID? Well, uh, from... No, not since COVID. Um, what are your, are they having, have you tried any in jury trials since COVID down in Brazoria? Yes, one. How was it? What, uh, what, talk to us about it. Were there, was it, where was it held and, um, and what kind of, uh, you know, procedures were in place for the, like, COVID procedures? So uh, they jury selection, the, the first Baptist church used to be right across the street mm -hmm. from the courthouse, uh, closed this summer. And so jury selection in our case was held in the gym at the first Baptist church. Um, and it, it was just, the panel was awful, just absolutely awful. Like Dennis Smith was first chair. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, I think I've tried my first case down there in 96 by far the most pro state veneer panel I'd ever encountered down in 96 there. or when 1996. Yeah. That's I've been trying cases there since 1996. No, no, I'm asking the one you tried in 96 or the one you just tried the one we just tried. Okay. This is yeah. what we so, were concerned about up uh, uh, as well at NRG that the, the panels were going to be so pro state and you you're telling you're, well, number one, there was some the, the fix was in. Obviously, we know that now. But you're saying that it was just the most pro state panel that you'd seen. It was awful. And, and again, it's happening to everybody. Everybody who's gone down to trial down there in the last year or so, I would say 90 percent of the defendants have gotten maxed out by the jury. Oh, God. Hey, let, wow. me, let me ask you, Craig. Gosh. Are you following COVID motions? Uh, I didn't file one there. I filed one in Harris County. I have filed one in Harris County. No, but I'm not trying to split you. I'm saying just maybe to preserve the notion that maybe that we're not having the best of an hour panel to come down, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, he's yeah, already kinda... got that in the bag. <laughs> yeah, because the, the fix wasn't. How, uh, what yeah. is the... Uh, what, oh, no, but quite frankly, unless somebody sues that clerk, this is just going to go by the wayside. It's a bad story. JV, I'm going to talk to you about this tomorrow. What? Uh, what? What's the? What's the judicial sentiment? What's the feeling about trying cases down there? Is it cautious? Is it like, look, we have everything fine? Jury trials. Let's let let's just go. What it what is the, what's the feeling down there, Craig? For the most part, it's let's go. I would say of the five district judges, three have been pretty gung ho. We're going to trial. We're going to do whatever it takes. Um, only one has been cautious. Um, 
Judge Huffstetler in the 300th District Court has been very cautious. He hasn't been pushing people. If you want to continue it, you're going to get one. But Terry Holder in the 149th uh, has probably been the most gung-ho. Uh, Justin Gilbert in the 412th, he's been putting people to trial. Um, the 461st. So it's the attitude's been been pretty, you know, we're going and and uh, they, they've been pretty gung ho. Are the uh, when you seat the jury and you go to the are, are you see where are you seating them in their regular courtrooms or the are you are, or are you when the trial commences? Are you in the uh, the large courtroom? You're you're in the regular courtrooms now. You're not in that ceremonial courtroom on the fourth floor. Uh, but you're in the regular courtrooms and the jury selection now has moved to the commissioner's courtroom on the first floor, which is a little, well, I'd say it's a lot better. It's not idea, but a lot better than that gymnasium. The gymnasium was awful, terrible. Are, are they providing uh, microphones and things like that or no? No, no. Really? So is the gymnasium in the, on the bleachers or they chairs on the floor? Uh, are you talking about in the gymnasium? Right. How are there they were doing chair, that? chairs on the floor. So everybody's spaced apart. Okay. Right. And then right. I imagine it's one panel at a time in the whole. Right. Room. Right. But but they've they they in fact I think the gym has been torn down this summer. The the church was they've moved, so that building is pretty much gone. And but the, um, there's no microphone. You're just yelling. Yes, and it was awful. Dennis did it. I was second chair. I didn't really, I wasn't that active in the trial, but um, it was, it was terrible. In the I mean, they tried non-death capital down there earlier in the summer, a friend of mine, Carrie Fadden. Um, so they've been doing some serious, wow. trying some serious hey, cases. I'm asking, did Carrie object to that situation, man? Could I believe be? that he did. I think that he did. I would imagine that he would have to have. Yeah. That was all. Care. Yeah. It, it back Some in, of that it, shit's coming back, man. Yeah, it has to. It sounds like all of those will come back thanks to the clerk's shenanigans. In yep. the, yeah, and in the courtroom, is the jury seated in the jury box or are they in the gallery? They're in the gallery. And are they are they closing the courtroom to public then? Uh, they for for regular tr for non trial dockets, yes, for the most part they are. Wow. Yeah. I love this. They, because, yeah, I love this. We haven't heard much. We haven't had any insight into Brazoria County, and you guys are having trials down there. Yeah, they, you know they were they were. Um, not very careful at all the first six, eight months. I mean, they were bringing people down there for misdemeanor dockets. Um, you know, the courthouse was always crowded. They really were not being careful at all. Then they sort of swung in the other direction. Just they were ultra cautious. Probably the biggest hassle there now is uh, the sheriff has decided he's not going to transport inmates from the jail anymore. So if you want to do a plea, you got to go to the DA's office, get the plea papers, drive eight miles out to the jail, you know, get your guy to sign, bring the plea papers back. Then your plea gets set for a video conference. And so, you know, a lot of planning has to go into a to a jail plea now. And it takes a lot of time. Hey, I'm, so not, I'm not taking no deal. I ain't taking no deal. Last second, right? Last second. Right. <laughs> Forget you know, it. you get out there and I'll, I'll <laughs> take 12 months, but not 15 months. And, yeah, you know, no. You got the papers there and it's just, anyway. That so that's kind of what's going on in Brazoria County. All in all, it's it's a little less friendly place to practice now for us. Hey, Craig, thanks for coming wow. on. Just a shout out, bro. Craig. No problem. Yeah, I mean, thanks a whole lot. Much. I apologize. No, 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 no. no, no, no. We this kept you on. We have 30 seconds Thank left you. on the show, man. And, uh, Krista, Krista Hall, a famous court reporter in, over here in, in Harris County, says the court reporter would say no to, she said, court reporters would say nope to all of this. Right. I can't imagine it, man. And I can't imagine the disarray of the clerk's office that's going on. Um, uh, John Kahn, real active, says he has civil trials that are being pushed and he's ready to go. John, we know you're ready to go all the time. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm just saying. Hey, look, Craig, uh, thank you so very much for giving us a scoop down in Brazoria County, man. You are always welcome on the show, and I can't wait to see yes, you please. in the courtroom and kicking butt all over the place. Thank you so very much. Sounds good. Uh, board certified criminal trials and appeals. Craig, thank you for coming on, my man. You're welcome. Y'all take care. Yeah. Have a good evening. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you. Okay. Todd DuPont, president, past president of HCLA and, and host of Harris County Criminal Law Association. Thank you, my man. Thank you, Todd. Very much. Justin uh, Harris. Yeah. Justin Harris. Justin Harris. Thank you, my brother. And, thank uh, you. Yeah. JV, I hope you get called for jury duty sometimes. Hey, soon. and well, they don't call Mexicans over there, man. They're like, nah, <laughs> North County, North. Yeah, Not the ones from North Brazoria. Yeah, your zip code is too north or whatever. No, <laughs> yeah, right, dude. Uh, with that being said, J. Julio Bella, Justin Harris, Harris County Criminal Lawyers Association, Reasonable Doubt, with Kate Farrell on the show, and Judge Morton. Why don't you? Uh, Judge Morton says a good show. You the best, Judge. Hey, with that Thanks, being Judge. said, hasta luego. Adios, amigos. I'll see you next week.